Michael starts his gather, he's into the zone. Score! Echo wins it and the Sun Devils make it 18! Welcome into Hell Frozen Over for our first edition of the second semester of Arizona State Hockey. Alongside Nick Merrick, I'm Kerry Crowley, and I'm making my debut as a host for Hell Frozen Over, joining Nick, who's a veteran at this. Well, good to have you on board. I and mean, obviously, Trey Lanthier, uh, Allison Cummings, Austin Control, us all joining me as well. But now, we're going to stick with Kerry for this semester. So I'm feeling good things. Maybe I won't be stood up in front of the camera. <laughs> Hopefully, I can stick around for longer than they did. Obviously, they've got some class schedules that are in the way. But we're going to get right into it right now. Arizona State played a very exciting three-game homestand this past weekend with a win on Thursday night over Liberty in shootout fashion. Friday night, Stony Brook came into town and another shootout win for the Sun Devils. And Saturday night, they kept giving away free hockey. It took them until overtime, and a very exciting overtime win that was yeah. in a 5-4 to four victory over Stony Brook. Well, definitely not the weekend the Sun Devils would have expected uh, coming into it. Obviously, they're probably looking at Liberty came in as number 10. Stony Brook came in as number 15 based on the polls. I'm not exactly sure that's where those two teams will stand coming into the season. I think it will be a lot higher in the rankings. Uh, Stony Brook almost played like a top 10 team, as did Liberty. So very phenomenal hockey. They came in and played on the road. The Sun Devils had the target on their back. Yes, they're banged up. No more excuses. I'm sure Coach Powers is going to say that as well uh, when we have an interview with him later in the show. We're expecting to see the Sun Devils come out and play good hockey every single weekend. They played okay. Obviously, I think they're going to want to play a lot better. The good news is, don't want to rag on. They picked up the three game. They picked up all three victories that weekend. That's very good sign for this uh, program moving forward. That's what they're going to need to do, especially coming March. Uh, just uh, about a month and a half now down the road, as we'll see nationals coming on very quickly. But it, it really came down to the play of Joe Delianet. That's what sparked the Sun Devil team, uh, and that's what kind of got the forwards into it. Because without him, it would have not been. Uh, nearly as good of a showing. Well, thank goodness for Joe Delia, but that's what the best teams do. They win when their backs are up against the wall, and they win when it's tough. And obviously, a couple guys sitting out this weekend, Dan Sterna missed a couple games, Stephen Collins even missed a game, Corey Chisholm, Fez Khan. So you can just go up and down the Sun Devil roster, and pretty much everyone's banged up right now. But because of Joe Delia, they were able to get some quality victories. Well, it's a good point, too, with that you mentioned. Uh, actually, the Stephen Collins with a healthy scratch on that Friday game against Stony Brook, that turned out to be one of the best things that happened because then guess what? Next game, completely different Stephen Collins. We saw Stephen Collins that all Sun Devil fans are used to. Had three assists out there, played like a workhorse, set up McGinty on both the goals in the third period to tie the game up both times. So he played phenomenal, the freshman out there. And then Joe Delia really put the team on his back. I don't think we've seen two better back-to-back -back performances in net for the junior uh, net minder. He played fantastic, doing his job, really taking that leadership role. He's been kind of a quiet hero all season long. But last weekend really showed uh, the Sun Devil faithful what he's made of. The fact that he can come in any game, focus, and play very well. I mean, if you're looking at it, both games in Liberty came out. Just one goal given up to Liberty. The offense wasn't there, but it didn't matter. Now we go to the, the goaltending and the defensive side, and that's where they stood strong, and that's how they were able to get over the edge uh, this weekend. Well, you mentioned Joe's a quiet hero. He's been solid all season for the Sun Devils, but this weekend we really learned that he's basically this team's MVP. 51 saves, yeah. too, in that uh opening out against Liberty. Yeah, and 35 in another game against Stony Brook. So Joe Delia, and not to mention the shootout against Liberty. They Good went point. to eight rounds of a shootout and Joe did not allow a single goal. I mean, it, the guy That's played an of. incredible game. It doesn't even happen in the NHL. Obviously, this is an NHL talent. They're very good hockey, but the fact that Come on, you're going to stop all eight of them? That's, that's insane. You're standing on your head. And an another guy you mentioned who had one of the biggest plays of the weekend was Stephen Collins. In overtime of that third game against Stony Brook, he made a diving stop. And it's rare that you see forwards go down to their knees to, to dive and stop a puck. But that's what happens in four-on-four -four overtime hockey. He dived, stopped the puck that could have been could have led to a goal for Stony Brook. Danny McCullough picked off the puck, went straight down the ice, put it in the net, and the Sun Devils win their third consecutive game of a very exciting weekend. So great job by Stephen Collins. Too. Yeah, it was pretty much definition of a textbook play. They, maybe a little bit of the Seawolves uh, defense rubbed off on Collins because he certainly played that more physical style in front. And that was the one diff that was the one deal breaker. Collins was seeing them, no backdoor chances all game, couldn't get in the slot. Now they finally did when he, when he connected with McGinty, chemistry was working there. She so figured, all right, I'm gonna take, give them a Stony Brook a taste of their own medicine. And that's exactly what happened. Kerry set up uh, Danny McCall. Every time he had it on his stick, Pretty good chance he's going to score the goal on a breakaway, and that's exactly what he did, taking the team to victory. So 
Seeing the offense come back to life in that third period may just be what the Sun Devils need for the Oklahomas this weekend, as that's certainly going to raise some eyebrows. But, but we'll, we'll preview the Oklahoma series later on in the show to close things out. Obviously, Sun Devils trailing 2-0 to zero heading into the third period of that final game of the weekend on Saturday night. They score four goals, come back three separate times against the Sony Brook Seawolves, go into overtime, Danny McAuliffe seals it, and they really need to ride this momentum into the weekend series against the Oklahoma schools. Well, we'll see what they'll do. I mean, obviously Oklahomas are both very talented teams coming in. The Sun Devils did sweep them uh, at their home at their home rinks uh, earlier this season. If that can happen again, the Sun Devils will have a great momentum moving forward for Rhode Island, U of A, and then eventually Natties. Right now, Oklahoma ranked number five in the country. They play them on Thursday night. And then Central Oklahoma, not too bad either. They play them Friday and Saturday. So it's gonna be a big series for the Sun Devils. We'll see how they do. Uh, right after this break, we're gonna talk to Sun Devil forward Troy Scott about how he thinks the Sun Devils stack up against the Oklahoma schools. Tacos? Nah. Burgers? Yesterday. Right. Mm. I'm thinking... Mongolian. Looking for a fresh, healthy alternative? Take a trip to Genghis Grill. Spice up your favorite meats and seafood, then load up on veggies. Choose a sauce and let our Genghis Grill masters cook your selection to perfection. Genghis Grill, masters of Mongolian stir-fry. Hey, go vegetarian? <laughs> ah, chicken. Me too. Mm. Uh. Welcome back to Hell Frozen Over. We're joined now by Arizona State forward Troy Scott. And Troy, big weekend for you guys. Three consecutive overtime games, and you played a big role in those three victories. Can we talk about what you did for the team? Well, you know, my goal is just to go out there and grind, hit bodies, get pucks on net, try to make things happen. I mean, sometimes during the game, course of the game, it's pretty physical and rough out there. I have to do my part and try to grind it out and try to help the team out any way I can. Well, definitely in the first two games, your line, uh, you alongside Dan Anderson, and then also uh, been playing some with things, some with, with uh, Jancy mainly. You guys played very well. I'm sure we'll be pleading the coach to have you guys stick together. Yeah. But uh, can you just talk about what that means? That Sure, you guys might not come out and get every single goal. You may not have to be on the stat sheet or flood it. But you guys were kind of the workhorse that really sparked the team to get the two victories. Yeah, I mean, through the course of the game, like we work really hard. We work really good together. I mean, Jancy and Anderson, we've been together for third year, and Finn's even there goes too. We're just a bunch of kids that like to work hard out there, so it, we work really well together, and I'd like to see us play a little bit more in the next games coming up here. Now, what was it like after that game that you guys actually got to take the hard hat of the game uh, from the team? Was that a pretty good honor? Oh, yeah, I, I like the hard hat. Usually guys don't like to bring it out and bring it home, but, you know, I haven't won it since the first game of last season, so it's been a while, so I like to bring it out of the rink and walk around <laughs> it with it on, not keep it up. Everyone needs to see it every Give once some in a while. sunlight, right? Yeah, yeah. I felt like every shift of that Stony Brook series, when you came off the ice, Coach Powers would yell, good shift, Troy. I mean, we could hear him up in the press box. What does that do for your confidence when you know that you're giving, giving the team some solid ice time? I mean, it does a lot for my confidence. Obviously, I don't get too many goals. I haven't got that many this year, point-wise. But, you know, it just encourages you to keep going. I like that in Coach Powers, how he keeps the guys motivated. He always gives good compliments. When he does give you feedback, it's not going to be negative. It's going to be constructive towards your game, so it's going to really help your game in the future. So that's what I really like about it. Now, from an overall look this past weekend, you guys may not play the best hockey of the weekend or of the season that you guys would have liked. Um, how do you feel the team played? What do you what do you think, guys, need to fix going forward? I mean, you just got to give it to both teams that like came out and played us. They played us really hard. They played us like we were the first place team. Every team from now on is going to be playing and gunning for us because we are first place. So we have to go to the level and beyond it. Every team's going to come at us very hard, so we just have to play our own game and not worry about what they're going to be throwing at us. You're playing Oklahoma and Central Oklahoma this weekend, those are two teams you dominated earlier in the season, but right now obviously a little more banged up. What are your guys' goals heading into the weekend knowing that you've already beaten these teams? I mean, both teams have been playing really well right now. I mean, Oklahoma's up there in Canada, and they took uh, Simon, or not Simon Fraser, UBC to overtime. That was probably the hardest team we played all season, so they're playing really good hockey. And then UCO was up in uh, Buffalo, I think, last weekend, and they had some two good games up there. So those teams are coming in right now, and they're going flying right now. So we have to do our best and try to play at the level that they're playing at right now and just get back to Sun Devil hockey. And being one of the veterans on the team, what does it mean for this program, the fact that you got the sweep against uh, the Oklahomas last year? And I have a chance to pick up a three-game sweep against Oklahoma. It's never been done. You guys never swept them. Now you have a chance to pick up all three games. So what, is, what does that really mean for this program? I mean, it's going to be huge because not only for this season, but going forward, since they're in our conference next year, it's going to be a huge leg up if we 
we get this sweep this year. So we have to come out guns firing this weekend for sure. And Troy, thank you for joining us. Good luck this weekend against the Oklahomas. Stay tuned. We'll have Coach Greg Powers when we come back from the break. Welcome back to Hell Frozen Over. We're joined now by Sun Devil coach Greg Powers. And coach, long weekend, three consecutive victories, but they all took a little extra time. What do you have to say about uh, the shootout victories? Well, you know, it was, it was the good thing that we're taking away from the weekend is that we found a way to win all three games. Um, you know, and really that's the only positive takeaway. We're not playing our, our, our best hockey or even, even half as good as we should be, but we're finding ways to win. And, and you can draw from that positive and, and really focus on it. And, We've worked all week and some things that we need to shore up, and, and hopefully we're a lot cleaner and sharper tomorrow against Oklahoma because we're going to have to. Well, folks, it's my understanding that you guys tried to get a more simpler style of play out there in the ice. Definitely looked like that, especially on the Saturday game against Sunny Brook, so game two. You actually played probably the best game of the three on that uh, the, the weekend finale. Able to get the win with four goals in the fourth. So how does that seem the, the effort the team showed in the last 20 minutes? Well, I mean, when you're when you're struggling in your systems and you're struggling with confidence and, and the puck's not going in for you, you're not getting bounces. You have to dummy your game down. You have to, you know, simplify things and make the simple plays and the simple passes and and uh, you know get back to basics and focus on defense. And that's what we try to do. And on Friday we did. We did a very good job of that, playing a, a very simplistic game. Um, you know, we only allowed one goal, and then on, uh, on Saturday, uh, you know, the third got away from us a little bit uh, with a couple goals that probably they shouldn't have had uh, for a lot of reasons. But, um, you know, I mean, that's what you have to do. You have to kind of break it that back down and build it back up. And, and I think that third period, we started playing like we did the entire first half, and hopefully that's what we're going to see here tomorrow. A lot of resilience you guys showed in that third period with five goals overall counting overtime. Uh, how do you build on that and head into the Oklahoma series with momentum? Well, again, you just have to draw from all the positives. You know, I mean, we're, 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 let's let's call it spade a spade. We're very banged up right now. We don't have our full lineup. And we won't have our full lineup this weekend either, but um, it's no excuse. We still have enough depth and enough, you know, talent uh, in what we're putting out there that, that we should beat everybody we play and we anticipate and expect to still. We just have to change things and change our approach. And, uh, you know, that third period, uh, we got it done and, and we looked like ourselves. And that's the way they're going to have to play for 60 minutes against Oklahoma because we know they're going to come in uh, seek some revenge for what we did with them uh, in Norman earlier in the year. All right, well, let's shift gears to Oklahoma. Obviously, uh, Joe Dealey's been a fantastic leader. He played phenomenal hockey on Thursday against Liberty and then game one against Stony Brook. A couple goals I'm sure you would have wanted to take game two. Um, can you talk a little bit about how Joe's been playing in that and how maybe his play possibly inspired the team to, to kick start now and hopefully will play well this weekend? Yeah, we, we, don't, we don't win those first two games you know, against Liberty and the Friday game against Stony Brook if Joe didn't play the way he did. He, he in my opinion, completely stole the Liberty game. Um, we had no business winning that hockey game, and, and then on uh, Friday against Stony Brook, he was, he was also good. You know, granted, we, we had over 50 shots on goal that night. Their goal was very good too, but Joe held Stony Brook to one goal and, and stayed strong in the shootout, and we won. So those two games, you know, really I think showed everybody, you know, in our room, outside of our room, that we have a goalie that's capable of, of, of single-handedly winning us a, a hockey game. And, you know, to date, he probably hasn't had to, to single-handedly win us a game. He's been a huge part of our success, obviously, but um, he stole that game, and that's huge for our team morale and confidence. Because at Nationals, you never know, you might need that. You mentioned you might be a little banged up this weekend. What do you look for when you're creating your lineups, especially when you get down to those third and fourth lines and combinations that you put together? Well, you know, that's the good thing. You know, the upside to you know how I kind of manage our bench and manage our, our, our lineup is that a lot of guys have played together. You know, and, and I mean, we want to find chemistry, we want to find things, but I'm not afraid to switch things up when they're not going the right way. Uh, and, you know, Nick knows that from being around us now for a while. But, um, you know, the, the, any line combo I put together, they're going to feel comfortable. They've probably played together at least some. 
Um, and that's the advantage of doing that because right now that's what we need, you know, and that's the, you know, why we preach at ASU chemistry, chemistry inside the room and outside of these walls and because if you don't have it there and you don't have it in the room, you can't have it right on the ice. So um, that's the, the glaring thing that we have going for us is we've got a great group of kids and the chemistry is awesome and, and uh, confidence is completely unwavered. Well, last question I can have for you, Coach, is really looking towards this weekend. Oklahoma Thursday, two against Central Oklahoma then on Friday and Saturday. And then you'll have uh, at least a week off and then to prepare for Rhode Island coming back next weekend. So obviously the schedule is just getting, it's, it's still acclimating, still climbing up. Um, Robert Morris is right behind the wings in you guys in terms of first place votes. Is that at all playing a fact? This team is definitely number one on paper. You mentioned it, maybe not showing it as well on the ice last weekend, but are we going to see things change this weekend? You know, I mean, one of our five goals going into the season was, was not to pay attention to rankings. I didn't think that we would be one as, as quickly as we got the one. It's been great. Uh, we know that we're the top team in the country. We have no doubt we're the top team in the country when we're playing the way we should. Um, if Robert Morris jumps us, good for them. You know, they're a great hockey team, and, um, you know, we haven't, we're 4 and 1 since we've, we've been back since break, and we played a tough schedule. We're finding ways to win, and if, if people vote them for us, then good for them. They've earned that. Um, as long as we're playing the way that we want to be playing, and we're confident heading into the national tournament, and, and uh, we're feeling good about ourselves, that's all we care about. It doesn't matter what the seed is, it doesn't matter what the number is. Sure, it's great to be one. I'm not going to. You know, sugarcoat that, and sure, it's great to get as good of a seed as you possibly can going into the, the tournament, but whatever happens, happens. We just want to be playing our best hockey when that time comes. Coach, thank you for joining us. Good luck this weekend against the Oklahomas. Thanks. I think when you come watch our team practice, what you're going to see is we go extremely fast. Practices, our tempo, everything is up 100%. In spring ball, we were going game speed, and he still thinks it's slow. You have to be mentally tough. Every snap, you better give 100%. I just like the fight, the grind, every single play. Do not put two hands on offensive linemen. What I saw when I showed up here, I saw a bunch of young kids that was hungry to win. The sky's the limit for Sun Devil football. I'm Kevin Hanlon with your uh, brand new D2 update and I'm just here to give you a look around the D2 hockey team and uh, rightly so. This will be the second year in a row that the D2 men's team is going to be in the national tournament in the D2 ACHA. So a uh, couple names first, we have Cameron Morgan, your captain, on and off the ice. He's the point leader with 30 points as well as defenseman William Hines with 23 points. He's also a senior veteran and uh, also pay attention to Justin Butler. He also has 23 points as a forward. Goaltender Trevin Wilson joined the team this year, and he's taken over for Kyle Dietrich, who last year led the ACHA D2 men's team to nationals. And uh, Trevor Wilson has done a fine job these last few days, uh, last few games, coming in, helping out the team, really leading them to victory. Uh, the boys are ranked uh, second in the West right now, just behind Utah State. And next Friday and Saturday, they take on NAU, who is fourth ranked and is their in-state rivals. Uh, the boys started off the season 13-4-2, a solid record. A little shaky in the beginning, but they're uh, coming into their own now, and they're going to be just fine going into Nationals. Currently, they're 15-5-3 after a split weekend up in Colorado. They took on CSU with the first game. It was their first game back after Christmas. A little bit shaky going in, but they cleaned up fine in the second game where uh, they won 4-2. It was a tight game, 3-2 going down in the last few minutes until Justin Havriliak, a junior, uh, threw a bank shot goal off and it went into the empty net to get the big win for the ASU Sun Devils. <clears throat> Third game up in Boulder. Uh, the boys took on the Boulder Buffs and they won 5-2 with a commanding lead, commanding win, and uh, they really took it to him playing Sun Devil hockey just the way Coach Dennis LeClaire wants them to play. However, the second game was Sunday morning and it was the fourth game after a long weekend. Uh, the boys fell in overtime and, uh, you know, they really need this break coming up. It's going to be well deserved, uh, well used, with some practice time, some time uh, with each other, get the comfortability back, get the, the flow going, get back in the groove, and it's really good for the boys this weekend. So uh, look for them next weekend in Flagstaff when they take on their in state rivals, NAU. And uh, now we're going to go to Josh and Richie for our weekly ACHA update. Thanks, and welcome to Around the ACHA. Alongside Richard Flores, I'm Josh Franz. Let's get right into it, Richie. Who was your player of the week this past weekend? Yeah, I had to dive deep into the ACHA this weekend to find my player of the week. It was Nick Torrance out of Eastern Michigan University. He had an incredible week, scored 14 points in two games. 
incredible weekend by him. And the one thing for me that I look to here is the fact that in the NHL, only 16 players in the history of the NHL have scored eight points in one game like he did on Saturday against Western Michigan. And that is something that he's got to be proud of. So congratulations, Nick, on your incredible weekend. That's right, a great week from Nick Torrance. I didn't dig as deep as you did in the ACHA standings this week. I stayed more towards the top of the rankings. Fourth-ranked Adrian outscored 11th-ranked Oklahoma 12-3 to this past weekend. Logan Blackwell led the way with three points combined in the two games, including two second-period goals in Thursday's 6-3 win over Oakland. He put Adrian on his back, carried him to victory. He was my player to watch this past weekend. Now... The one thing I want to mention about Adrian, uh, Josh, is the fact that they're one of those teams about in the top five of the ECHA that is really they, they really want to get to that number one spot, and it is so close right now. And it's going to be a fun race to watch in these last couple months of the season. Right, we've we've seen ASU struggle a little a, lit, a little bit as of late, and teams are working their way up to that number one spot to join them. But let's move on to a teams to teams that are a little further back. Who is your dark horse to surprise everybody in nationals? Uh, yeah, I got to go with uh, Navy. Josh, the last time we did this show a while back, you we were talking about Navy, That's so right. I'm going to talk about them here today. And the fact that the one thing that interested me about Navy is they haven't really beat a lot of great competition. They do have four wins inside the top 25 so far this year. And, but the reason that I want to look out for them is they are ranked inside the top 15, so their team that obviously nationally is getting some decent attention. But the one thing that I liked that I liked when I looked at their statistics is the fact that their strength of schedule is only is the third weakest in the ACHA, and they're going to have to take a big uh, run towards the playoffs, and they're going to do it because they have the nation's leading point getter in uh, Andrew, or excuse me, uh, Thomas Crystal. I probably got his name wrong, and one of the greatest, the best goaltenders in the ACHA as well, in Andrew Mills. And if you get great scoring and great goaltending, I think Navy is going to be a team that we're going to be talking about come the national tournament. Right, you mentioned Crystal and Mills, but like you said, it wasn't against the greatest competition, and I think that is what's going to hurt them going forward. When you play Nationals, you're only going to play against great competition. They haven't tested themselves that much during the regular season, and that's going to come back to bite them in the end for me. The team I'm going to talk about is Stony Brook. They've played the best of the best so far, and they've held their own. They've come off two games against Arizona State, one loss in overtime, one loss in a shootout. They were winning late in the third period in both of those matchups. They play with a lot of heart, a lot of grit. They make the other team not like them, a lot of energy. If they can just learn how to finish games, like if they finished against right. Arizona State, they prove they can beat anybody in the country at their home ice. So they're a team to watch out for for me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you come into the barn of the number one ranked team in the ACHA and you nearly beat them, and they probably should have beat them, um, they, they definitely are starting to get the attention of guys like us in the media who are you know, starting to look at this stuff and looking ahead to the national tournament. So uh, good luck to them the rest of the season. <laughs> That's right. I think they'll be there toward the end. Now let's move on just to this weekend. What is your matchup of the week? I'm going to go with uh, our uh, friends to the south, the uh, University of Arizona <laughs> Wildcats. They're taking on Central Oklahoma and Oklahoma University this weekend. And the reason why this caught my eye is because the UVA has struggled of late. They have lost their last four games in a row. They're really in a rough patch of the season right now, and they really need to get two victories this weekend because if they if they either go 0-2 or 1-1, they're 18th ranked right now. If they continue to falter, they're going to find themselves outside the top 20, and they're not going to be in the national tournament, and that is a huge disappointment, uh, if you ask me. That's right. U of A had high expectations coming into the season. Remember, the top 20 teams make the national tournament, so they're right on the edge right now. They need to keep playing well in order to make the tournament. My, my matchup to watch this week is a top 10 matchup. Didn't search too much again. I love watching the great teams play. We have second ranked Robert Morris uh, against sixth ranked Ohio for an intense matchup. As I said, both ranked in the top 10. Brings great hockey and can bring changes to the top five. Remember, at this point in the season, you're thinking about seeding for the national tournament. These two teams want the buys in the first round. They want to be able to play the opponents that match up well with them in the second round. So look for them to take both to take the two games they have this weekend seriously and again it's a measuring stick for both of these clubs they need to know where they stand going into the big tournament yeah josh we talked about already i mean how tough this acha is right now and that is a perfect example of that i mean this is the time where these games are going to get start getting so competitive i mean this is part of the season where maybe you could see a top 20 uh tail end of the top 25 team knock off a top 10 team because you know that anything could happen at the tail end of the season into the national tournament that's right Teams are playing well right now, playing with a lot of heart. Well, that'll do it for around the AC ACHA. For Richard Flores, I'm Josh Franz. We'll be back with more Hell Frozen Over after the break. 
When you've lost that love and feeling, donate it to Good Wheels. Your unwanted vehicle will help fund job skills training and human services programs for disadvantaged Arizonans. You'll even receive a tax deduction. So call 602-416-6278 for more information. Or visit us online at www.goodwillaz.org. Good stuff, good work, good will. Welcome back into Hell Frozen Over. We just got our D2 update from Kevin Hanlon and our Around the ACHA news from Richie and Josh. But the Sun Devils D1 team has a big series coming up this weekend. First on um, Thursday night against the Oklahoma Sooners and then Friday and Saturday night against Central Oklahoma. Nick, who's your player to watch this weekend for ASU? Well, interesting uh, question, Kerry. Can we look at it? The Sun Devils are going to see two different teams they saw back in mid-November before Thanksgiving break. Both Oklahoma schools have been playing much better hockey as of late, especially Oklahoma. I mean, we heard Troy Scott mention it uh, earlier in the show when he said, you know, they took University of British Columbia into that overtime period. That was the same team that beat the Sun Devils 8-2 to two, uh, and arguably the toughest team he mentioned that they played this season. So it's going to be a very different look. Because of that, I think I'm going to look on the defensive side of the rink. So I'm going to go with one of the senior leaders having to step up. I'm not going to give it to Clark or Charwa, I think it's time that Brian Parson is really starting to come into his own. We saw that unconventional Parson-like goal in the last series against Stony Brook. He got it right here, actually right over our shoulders in this corner when he had a centering feed that ricocheted off uh, Jones's his pad in the back of the net. So we're used to the Parson slap shot. He's been playing very well defensively, but maybe the offense is coming back slowly. He's been playing a lot better, getting more shifts, uh, working better in the offensive zone. Also, defense has been pretty sound for him all weekend long. So I think it's going to be a grudge match on the defensive end. He's going to be a big uh, reason for that. Well, we talked earlier in the show about how important Joe Delia has been to this team, and he played all three games last weekend, one against Liberty and then two against Stony Brook, and I don't think we'll see Joe Delia all three games, so my player to watch is going to be either Kyle Dietrich or Corey Frank. Whoever gets that middle, that middle game of the series, I think, is when Coach Powers is going to rest Delia. So, obviously, one of the two goaltenders, Goaltenders is going to have to step up for the Sun Devils to have a chance because Delia has been playing so well and the defense has come to rely on a great goaltender. Well, that's an interesting point because Dietrich actually did play against Oklahoma uh, and when they were on the road early in November. Played very well, only gave up uh, a goal to his credit. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see Dietrich again, but maybe Coach Powell will say, well, I, we saw Dietrich, we know he did well. Let's see if Corey Frank can do well against the Sooners. Quick tidbit on the Central Oklahoma team that's coming to Tempe this weekend. Arizona State's been playing a lot of shootout games lately. Two of their last three have been shootouts. The last time Arizona State lost a shootout was actually against Central Oklahoma last year, and it was at Oceanside Arena. So very difficult task if they do go to overtime. Since 2006, Sun Devils are 12-4. and four. They've been one of the best shootout teams in the ACHA under Greg Powers. So obviously some great stats there as well. Nick, any news on the Oklahoma team? I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll take a look and see how they do this weekend. You know they're going to come off fire and powering just like the other two teams. Both uh, Greg Powers and Troy Scott mentioned it earlier. The Sun Devils have that number one target on their back. They're always going to have that number one target on their back. Maybe it won't be as bad of a thing if they do slip in the rankings. So if you're a fan, don't worry. It'll, it might release some pressure, maybe motivate the team a little more. So that's what the Oklahoma school are going to look to capitalize. Say, guys, Liberty just, just took them neck to neck, as, as did Stony Brook. They both came in on the road to heck. Stony Brook came from New York to play them. Uh, Liberty, a very big trip as well from Virginia. So both teams are even traveling further than the Oklahoma schools. So it should be a chance to say, guys, the Sun Devils are banged up. Let's see if we can do any damage and really uh, take a rise in the rankings. Well, obviously a very important series. You've talked about it. We've talked about it a lot. It's time for the Sun Devils to take the ice. Three games this weekend. The Walter Cronkite Sports Network will have all three broadcasts for the Sun Devils. For Nick Merrick, I'm Kerry Crowley, and the rest of the Walter Cronkite Sports Network, thank you for watching Hell Frozen Over.